Hello, I'm Roland Partridge, a consultant paediatric surgeon with a specialist practice in laparoscopic upper GI and thoracic surgery. And I'm the founder and CEO of EOSurgical. EOSurgical make this, the EOSIM, the world's best laparoscopic simulator. It's the best because it's tried and tested with users now in over 90 countries globally. It's the best because it's robustly evidence-based with more than 30 peer-reviewed validation studies demonstrating its effectiveness as a training tool published by groups from all around the world. These multiple validation studies have collected masses of data and demonstrated great construct validity of the instrument movement metrics that we record, clearly distinguishing between ability levels and being able to benchmark and guide skills progression. They've also demonstrated great concurrent validity between our instrument movement metrics and other assessment criteria. It's the best because it's been designed by active surgeons who know firsthand that the key to training is instruction, rehearsal, and feedback. So we've designed a structured training curriculum with 18 modules arranged in three courses of increasing technical difficulty. It has instrument tracking that maps the movement inside the case to give you objective performance feedback. It delivers this immediately to facilitate formative feedback to help you guide your next rehearsal. And you can submit videos to be assessed for formal summative feedback if used within a training institution. Assessors can review the progress of trainees and formally assess and sign off these modules remotely. We started 13 years ago with a webcam in the box attached to a desktop or laptop outside the box. But then about five years ago, we said, wouldn't it be great if we could get a better camera? Wouldn't it be great if that camera could have coaxial light like a real scope? Wouldn't it be great if we could remove the need for every simulator having to have a laptop or desktop next to it? Wouldn't it be great if we could find some really accessible, powerful processing device that all users have with them at all times? So a light source, a high quality camera, a powerful processor, always available. You know, if only, oh, it does exist. You have one in your bag, in your pocket, next to you on the desk there. Maybe you're watching this on it. This is the future using a mobile device as the camera and processing unit. It makes it the ultimate in affordability and accessibility, whether using it at work or as a take-home simulator for a hub and spoke training model. And as many studies have shown, simulator use is all about accessibility, both for trainee surgeons finding the time to rehearse and also trained surgeons for pre-optive warm-up. I will often, before a big lap case, take my phone out, pop it on the simulator at work, and do a few minutes of lap suturing by way of warm-up before a big case, and it definitely helps keep you sharp. It's a physical simulator rather than using virtual reality because VR devices are just not realistic in how they feel. And as every laparoscopic surgeon knows, there's just no substitute for the feel, for, for holding a real needle in a real needle holder. And we haven't gone overboard with complex augmented reality visual overlays, as we know that what really matters in surgical skills training is much less what it looks like, all about what it feels like. Let me show you how it works. Take your phone and you place it on the lid of the ear sim with the camera pointing through the aperture here. You can, if you want, just use your phone. The screen is quite small, but if you can do it on your phone at this size of screen, where you go to theatre, the real thing is easy. Of course, if you have a tablet, that also works brilliantly on here. Again, just point the camera of the tablet through the aperture and that works really nicely. What we're demonstrating here and what lots of people use is a setup where you have a screen by the simulator. You then just need um, a lightning, if it's an Apple device, or a USB, if it's an Android device, to either HDMI or VGA that will plug into to any screen or monitor. You can, of course, also wirelessly screencast. You then start the application surge track that we've developed, the instrument tracking app. You click Start Task. And this shows you these 18 modules that we've arranged in three courses of increasing uh, tiered technical difficulty. We've also curated some specialty specific courses containing six of the, the modules tailored for the type of skills that you need for those particular specialties. So we've got an OBGYN, a urology, and an orthopedic course. We're going to take one of the modules from the elite course, the horizontal suture. When you open this screen, you get text describing how the task should be set up and undertaken. There is a video to watch demonstrating the procedure and giving you hints and tips on best practice. You then click Start Task. And this starts the camera application to show you what's going on inside the box. 
you click this button here to turn on the flash of your device to give you that coaxial light. You then take your instruments and perform the task. And as you're performing this task, there are small crosshairs on the red and blue portions of the instruments. And this demonstrates the part of the instrument that's being mapped by the tracking software. You complete the task and then you click end task. And that gives you this objective performance feedback. The software has mapped the movement of your instruments and it gives you these numbers, the path distance, the ratio of left to right handedness, the percentage of time that your instruments are off screen. Also the speed, acceleration and motion smoothment of both left and right hand hands. Now those metrics over time will start to mean something as you build up a bank of repeated tasks. But in the immediacy, we have developed a process that essentially reads these metrics for you and gives you some immediate formative feedback to help guide your next rehearsal. We've chosen two metrics following the validation studies that we perform. We've chosen these metrics because they're the two that distinguish most clearly between experience levels and the two that change most over time as you rehearse. So the first is the ratio of left to right hand instrument movement. So in this case, I got to keep up the good work. Your left to right instrument path distance is good. Continue to focus on being ambidextrous because we know that novice surgeons very, very heavily dependent on their dominant hand trained and more experienced surgeons, much more ambidextrous. So this gives you some immediate tips or positive feedback if you've done it well. The second metric is that of the percentage of time that your instruments were off the screen. With novice surgeons, their instruments are often waving around, frequently out of the field of view. Experienced surgeons maintain their instruments within the field of view for a much greater percentage of the time. So here is the natural language feedback. It says scope for improvement. Your instruments were off screen for greater than 20% of the time during that task work on keeping your instruments within the field of view. So then, then you click done and you can enter your history. This demonstrates the number of hours that you have spent practicing, the number of activities you've completed. You have the number of hours that your group have spent practicing and the number of activities your group, say if you're part of a training institution or, or, or region. And then we've got the global time here. So this shows that globally, since we launched this system, 7,845 hours have been spent by people training around the world. And that is the completion of 132,000 tasks. Further down, we have your individual repetitions. So all of the data from all of those tasks is stored both locally on your device and immediately synced to your online portfolio that you can log into for anywhere. We pick one of your tasks, we can review the video, review your metrics. And if we have reached one of the target times for each module, you can submit it for grading. And in a minute, I'll show you what the assessor sees on the assessor dashboard. So this is the assessor dashboard. It lists all the tasks that have been submitted to you as an assessor. We'll select one and you get this, the video that was submitted by that user you observe that video to confirm that the task was completed as per the instruction video for that particular module. You then confirm what time it was completed, whether it was completed in a grade A, B or C target time. We've built into this assessor dashboard an OSATS tool that allows you to assess three criteria, handling of instruments, flow of procedure and respect for tissues and score each of those elements using a one to seven Likert scale. There's also a comments box to allow you to give the more nuanced feedback that can be delivered by free text. You would then press complete assessment and that assessed performance goes into a user's portfolio. Once all six modules of a given course have been completed, that user will receive a certificate so in summary, the ESIM simulator and surge track software is the world's best laparoscopic training package. It is robustly evidence-based and used in over 90 countries globally. It's developed and led by active surgeons who see firsthand every day the need for 
and benefits of simulation training. It delivers immediate formative performance feedback to help guide rehearsal. It enables remote summative formal assessments by surgical trainers via the assessor dashboard. And it uses mobile device instrument tracking to deliver the ultimate in accessibility, which is vital to drive engagement with training, to improve the skills of surgeons, and ultimately to make surgery safer globally.